Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello students welcome to today's lecture In the last lecture we discussed about the radial nodes and angular nodes in the hydrogen atoms eigen functions we saw that the hydrogen atoms eigen function with quantum numbers n l and m we had n minus l minus 1 number of radial nodes and l number of angular nodes taken together we had n minus 1 number of total nodes what we have so far discussed is that how the radial function changes uh, in terms of r but we also see that different for different values of l when whether l is 0 for s orbital or l is 1 as p orbital or l, l is 2 d orbital we'll have different angular distribution of the uh, wave function and therefore the elect probability density however it often becomes very useful if we can convert this so called angular distribution of the wave function to a, another form which is known as the radial distribution in the radial distribution function what uh, formulation what we do is that suppose we have the wave function which depends on r theta and phi to obtain its probability uh over a finite of uh, in over an infinitesimally small volume d tau what we should do is that we should take the square of this function multiply this volume element d tau when we do this you remember that we our uh, total wave function had r depend uh, a radial term the angular terms and then the volume integral in case of uh, spherical coordinate system is given by this what we are trying to do is that to find the probability of finding my finding the electron anywhere between two concentric spheres of radius r and r plus dr so that means i am trying to find what is the probability of to be the for the electron to be found in this range between uh, between the two concentric spheres of radius r and r plus dr how would i do that i would do that for example if i stay at r value and find out the probability distribution for all values of theta and phi and do the same over this space of dr that would give me the total uh, probability density between r and r plus dr mathematically to do that i would simply uh, what i am trying to do is that i will try to integrate out the angular function so let us try to do that so i'll keep the radial functions uh, separately and then i would try to uh, integrate out the angular functions sorry here i should have a sin theta sin theta d theta multiplied by d phi so i am integrating it over 0 to pi for theta 0 to 2 pi for phi when i do this since i have radial part and angular part separately i i see that this function these functions are the spherical harmonic functions so they are individually separately normalized so therefore when i evaluate these terms i would actually get one so when i integrate them out if i am taking the normalized form of the uh, spherical harmonics their distribution will become one uh that would leave me the term shown over here when i integrate uh, integrate this this part out i am left with this term and i call this where this p of r is known as the radial distribution function and given as r nl square uh, absolute square 
multiplied by r square. So, this radial distribution function is a very uh, useful quantity because often what we would be interested in knowing is that what is the probability of finding the electron let us say 2 angstrom away from the nucleus or between 2 angstrom and 3 angstrom away from the nucleus. So, when I define uh, when I formulate my questions in this fashion. So, what is the probability uh, be to be found between 2 and 3 angstrom away from the nucleus. So, that means, between 2 and 3 angstrom nucleus I must span all over theta and phi space and then find the total probability. So, this is essentially telling that I am calculating or I am evaluating this distribution function along the radial direction while for each value of r I am integrating out the theta and phi. So, we will try to do this for one of the functions. Uh, let us consider uh, the easiest of them all for radial distribution function for 1 s 1 s orbital. So, this is simply 1 s if you remember this function so, I write this r s. So, this function r r 1 0 was 2 z over So, the square of this function would become or to to keep this is uh, excuse me. So, uh, this will become the square of it. So, 3, 3 over 2 when I square it, it becomes cube. So, I have this is the radial distribution function. When I plot this function, you would see at r and this I am this, uh, uh, plotting now the radial distribution function p as when r is 0 because of this r square term the radial distribution function says that this function becomes a 0 and when I go for finite value of r it increases as r square and then I see there is an exponentially decaying function which will eventually dominate and then I will have a term like this. What does this tell me? That it tells me the probability of finding the electron when it is in 1 s orbital between r equals 0 and very small value of r is essentially negligible. That means, the electron ac does not actually sit on the nucleus that would be uh, in the case of r equals 0. So, that radial probability density uh, ensures that. So, the radial distribution function becomes 0 at r equals 0 and as La higher value much uh, at very large value of r I see that the way, uh, radial distribution function becomes 0 that what does that mean? That means, I do not find the electron at r equals infinite that means, uh, there is only a finite range of space where where this electron is, is, is confined. So, this solution approaches asymptotically to 0, but what we notice is that there exists a particular value of r where the radial distribution function is maximum. Since we said the radial distribution function represents the probability to be uh, for the electron to be found um, at, at a distance of r uh, from the nucleus irrespective of what theta and phi are. So, therefore, I would be interested in knowing what is this value r. How would I get this? So, I am essentially trying to find the maximum of this function. So, to do that to find the value I must uh, differentiate this term with respect to r and make this 0. So, this way I can find the critical point uh, either the maximum or the minimum and to check whether it is indeed a maximum or minimum I must check the second derivative or for this case the first derivative itself uh, would, would suffice uh, in this case. So, I have this constant terms that I am ignoring. So, I have to differentiate uh, these terms when I do this I have 2 r e to the power minus 2 z over a plus r plus this is the first term and the second term is when I differentiate this term r square 
minus 2 z over a e to the power minus 2 z by a r. So, I am differentiating the exponential function by keeping r square. So, these two term together are 0. So, I see the e to the power minus 2 z by a r 0. So, I uh, e cancel that term out. So, I have 2 r equals r square. So, there is a uh, negative sign here 2 r equals r square 2 z over a. I took this quantity uh, to the left hand side. So, then you see the value of r that comes out is essentially a by z. So, here r r cancel out and 2 2 cancel out and I have a over z. So, this value of r is let us call it r max because this is the value of r the distance between electron and nucleus where the radial distribution function is maximum. When you look carefully for hydrogen atom z is 1 and when z is 1 this r max is simply a which is nothing but Bohr's radius. Something interesting to note here that we see for the quantum mechanical formulation of hydrogen atoms shows the maximum uh, probability density uh, for the 1 s electron to be found in hydrogen atom is at a or Bohr at Bohr's radius. That means, when the distance between the electron and nucleus is 0, uh, 1 Bohr uh, or 0 0.5 to 9 angstrom, that is the place where you would see maximum probability uh, for the electron to be, for, to be found. Interestingly, if you remember this Bohr's radius was defined by uh, Bohr in his Bohr's atomic model, where he said he determined the value of this r uh, and this our a and Bohr's radius are exactly the same. We have pointed this out. So, what we have seen here that while Bohr's atomic model said that the electron moves around a fixed orbit with a radius of Bohr's radius, radius r what we say here in from quantum mechanical formulation is that yes the electron actually moves around the nucleus the maximum probability uh, for the electron to be found is is at r uh, or as is at bohr's dis, bohr's length uh, from from the nucleus but we also have finite probability for the electron to be found elsewhere so what bohr's simple atomic model suggested it gave us only this result. What quantum mechanical formulation suggests is the distribution of the r that we can see. So, this is the outcome of uh, the quantum mechanical formulation and here we have this uncertainty in the location of uh, in location of electron uh, spans out which was not there in, in case of Bohr's atomic model. So, we looked at uh, what is this r uh, max and similarly uh, I would suggest that if you uh, you should try to do for let us say p 2 0 which would be simply r 2 0 square and r square and then find out what are the values of r where uh, this function will become maximum where or where this function will be minimum find out the critical point of this radial distribution function for 2 s orbital. You can do that mathematically, but what we would do now instead is to continue uh, we do this discussion. So, we saw that in case of uh, 1 s orbital the radi radial distribution function p of r looked like this. This was for 1 s. When I do that for 2 s orbital what I would actually see the following. Um, I would see something like this. I would see that there are two places where I would find the uh, maximum, ma uh, the maxima in the uh, radial distribution function as a function of r and at certain value point I will find that this radial distribution function becomes a 0. So, this is for 2 s, this is for 1 s and at, the, at this value of r the radial distribution function becomes 0. That, what does that mean? That means that this is r equals 0. So, that means at 
r equals 0 that means, on top of the nucleus there is no probability of for the electron to be found. In the close vicinity of the nucleus, uh, the electron will be found when it is in 2 s orbital. Beyond that, there will be a node that means, at no at no measurement will give me an r value of this this where it I experience a node and furthermore we would have more probability density uh, to be uh, at larger value of r. When I do this for 3 s I would experience something like this where I have. So, this is p of r as r and this is for 3 s. So, I would see that uh, there are there will be two rigid places of r where I would see radial nodes and then I would see the density uh, prob uh, density distribution of the electron in 3 s orbital will be farther and farther value of r. This you would understand it better if I try to plot all three functions in the uh, in the same graph. So, this was for my 1 s this is for 2 s this is for 3 s. So, you see in case of 3 s I get 2 radial nodes in case of 1 s I get 1 radial node and sorry in case of 2 s I get 1 radial node and in case of 1 s I see no radial node. And the other thing you see is that this is r this is p of r other thing that you notice here is that the 3 s electrons are farther away from the nucleus compared to 2 s and 1 s this is what we already know. This radial distribution function beautifully uh, depicts the shell model of, of uh, atom that we are very familiar with. So, what does this mean? This means 1 s orbital will be a sphere, the 2 s orbital will be a sphere inside another sphere. So, there will be sphere that means, the probability distribution is, is in this region and then I will have a node that means, there is no probability for the electron to be found and then again I will have some more probability uh, distribution after this, this node. In case of 3 s I have a sphere inside a sphere inside a sphere. So, that means, I have two radial nodes and the electrons are diffused farther and farther away from the nucleus. So, we looked at this uh, radial distribution function. Uh, next, what we will do is that we will try to find out the expectation value of r. To do that, uh, so if you remember the expectation value of any operator is simply uh, the uh, we, we obtain that by the square uh, psi star the operator and psi, where let us try to do this for again 1 s orbital, which is is given by this. So, for expectation value of the 1 s orbital I am writing uh, over here. So, uh, I would see first I will get r 1 s absolute square which, which is 4 and so this one will be this is the square of the function, this is r because I am calculating the expectation value of r and then I should not forget r square d r which is the, the volume uh, uh, element that I should uh, consider when I am integrating over r radial coordinate and here this r value goes from 0 to infinite. So, now when I look at this term I can uh, use this expression over here, there are some constant terms. So, I am keeping them outside. So, I have now r cube e to the power minus 2 z by a r d r, r cube became r square and r. Please remember this r is coming uh, because I am uh, calculating the expectation value of an operator when I do this. Uh, this is the general uh, definition of when I am trying to uh, obtain the expectation value of an operator for a function psi. So, I know 
uh, when I have an integral like this, it is it's, uh, the result of uh, this integration is simply when I have x to the power n e to the power minus q x uh, d x going from 0 to infinite. This is simply n factorial divided by q to the power n uh, pl plus uh, 1. So, this term would turn out to be n is 3 factorial. So, because I have r to the power n divided by q, where uh, q is 2 z divided by a and n plus 1, since n is 3, this is 4. So, now factorial of 2 is uh, 6. So, I have 6 into 4 divided by this is 2 to the power 4, which is uh, 16. And now, you see I have z over uh, z by a to the power 3, z over z by a over uh, 4, they would cancel out and I will be left with this value. So, when I look at this, so I have 3 by 2 a over z. This is what I am getting the average value of or the expectation value of r for 1 s orbital. What does this mean? Uh, when z is 1 for hydrogen atoms, this is simply 3 over 3 by 2 of a. So, this would say that for 1 s orbital, the value of r where the probability density is maximum is Bohr's radius a, but the average value. So, if you uh, remember the, the wave function uh, was like this and the radial distribution function was like this. So, the, uh, the maximum value was, was a, but the average value turns out to be 3 by 2 of a. In fact, if you use the general uh, for, uh, form of the hydrogen atoms eigen function and then find out the expectation value of r, the position uh, radial, uh, radial uh, operator here, r operator for any value of n l m, this is the general expression, where you see it depends on n quantum number, l quantum number, of course, it is silent about m quantum number, uh, the magnetic quantum number. What you notice here, for example, for l equals 0, in this case, what is when it is uh, the 1s one, one orbital, you can simplify this term to find out what this term gives me about for r of 1s. Uh, so, to do this, since n is 1, so I have a over z and 1 plus half into 1 minus this term, since l is 0. So, this term becomes 0. So, I have 1 plus half, I am getting what I obtain. For all other non-zero value of l, for example, for 2p or for 3p, we can use this relation to obtain this, but I would recommend you to actually find out the expectation value of at least 2s orbital and 2p orbital. So, we would use this general formula for the expectation value of r to make one particular discussion. Here, for example, you see one thing that you would notice uh, uh, here, this is the, these are the radial distribution functions for 3 s, 3 p and 3 d. In all three cases, s sorry the n the principal quantum number is 3, the l values are changing. When you see that, you would see that 3 s or orbital would have 2 radial nodes, 3 p orbital will have 1 node over here and 3 d orbital will have no node. This in the probability dis, dis, uh, in the radial distribution function. This we can uh, obtain by using the relation that we just discussed. Now, what this quantity tells that the expectation value for a given value of n, when I increase l, the average value of r would actually become smaller. That means, in case of three, uh, comparing 3 s, 3 p and 3 d orbitals, the electron in 3 d orbital, because of this larger value of l, would be much closer to the nucleus 
compared to 3 s, because in case of 3 s L is 0. So, this term becomes 3 or 1 just 1. In case of 3 p, we have 1 minus some quantity and in case of 3 d, 1 minus some quantity, but this quantity increases because of the larger value of L. So, say when this quantity in decreases, that means the average value of R where the probability uh, where the electron can be found also in decreases. That means, the max the, the average value of R for 3 s is greater than the average value of 3 p and average value of 3 d. The same thing also you can uh, compare by the maximum value the maximum uh, probability density for the 3 s 3 p and 3 d orbital and you would see that the R value at which this maximum would occur will decrease when we go from 3 s 3 p and 3 d. The other thing you also notice that the 3 s orbital is shows that the electrons can be found far much farther away from the nucleus than 3 p and then than 3 d. This is may be counterintuitive because we see that so when we have orbital angular momentum there will be a centrifugal force for the electron. So, that the electrons will be going away from the nucleus. So, therefore, we would have expected that the electrons in case of 3 d should be found uh, on average farther compared to 3 s or 3 p, but this is not the case. This can be explained by the fact that in case of 3 s we have two nodes 3 p we have one node where, whereas 3 d there are no nodes. Because of this additional radial nodes since uh, the probability distribution moves rightwards in case of 3 s and 3 p uh, than uh, as compared to 3 d. So, that explains the presence of radial node explains why our uh, average value of r is greater for 3 s compared to 3 p or 3 d. Now, we are showing the orbital uh, representation of different orbitals. So, what you see is that this is the probability distribution of electrons. So, that means, if you do many, many measurements you would find uh, these are the distribution for and we call that 1 s. And in case of 2 s you see first you would find some dis, uh, distribution in, uh, closer to the nucleus and then there will be a node you see the empty space followed by some more observation of the uh, electron. In case of 3 s you see first close to the nucleus you would see sometime the electron and afterwards there will be a node followed by some more distribution and one more node. So, we see 3 s. So, in case of 2 p orbital we have now got this ang angular node. So, you see this node is over the uh, over a plane. So, this is because of the angular node and the electrons are found either above this plane or below this plane. When I go to 3 p orbital in addition to having this angular uh, node because this is a p orbital I also experience a radial node. So, when I st start going upward from this plane where the uh, angular node is there, when I start moving upwards I first see some electron dis distribution shown in this orange uh, dots and then I would see some node here that means, there is no uh, probability for the electron to be found and again some more distribution. So, 3 p we have this angular node and radial node together I have got two nodes. In this and similarly, you can explain this 3 d where, where you have actually two planes uh, along which the angular nodes are observed. And the probability contour plots are shown here you can see for in, uh, in particular uh, 2 p and 3 p if I have to write in uh, draw in a qualitative format. So, this if this is 2 p I would have 3 p appearing something like this. So, I have as if a dumbbell within a dumbbell as we discussed that in case of 2 s 3 s there was sphere inside a sphere. So, we have now dumbbell inside the dumbbell. So, that again satisfies the shell structure of the atom that we are so familiar with. So, in today's class we discuss the uh, eigenfunctions the radial and angular part of the uh, components of the eigenfunctions of hydrogen atom and we will continue our discussion on the hydrogen atoms uh, eigenvalues uh, in the presence of external uh, fields in our next class. Thank you for your attention.